Hi everybody, my name is Nick, and I'm back with another video, and today, I'm going to show you how to make this DIY Segway. So first I'll just show a quick demonstration of the Segway in action, and then we'll move on to the build. So as we can see, uh, the Segway can go forward, backwards, left and right, and the left and right is controlled with two push buttons on the handlebar. The forward and backward is controlled with the uh, rider either leaning forwards or backwards. Uh, but anyways, I mean all segways are pretty much the same, so there's really nothing more to explain on that part. So without further ado, let's move on to the build. Okay, so the frame we're using comes from the Jazzy 113 Mobility Scooter, and the motor driver we're using to power the motors is the Sabretooth uh, 2x60 dual motor driver. Now as we can see, we have uh, connections going from uh, motor 1, uh, ground, 5 volts, or uh, not 5 volts, uh, 24 volts, and then motor 2. These are all connected uh, to their respective pins on the original Jazzy controller block. Anyways, we also have a uh, emergency pull cord right here for the ground lead, just in case something goes really wrong and we need to shut it off by disconnecting the battery. We have a way to do so. And we also found that uh, since the motor driver has huge capacitors on it. It has a really bad tendency to spark whenever we connect to the power. So what we found out works is using a charging resistor, which is on uh, this cable. So we'll just uh, connect this first, wait till the fan turns on, and it takes longer. Um, but then once the capacitors are charged, we quickly disconnect this and quickly connect the main cable. And then that either mitigates or uh, completely removes the spark, depending how well we time it. Anyways, um, besides that, then we have our output cables. These go to the Arduino. Those just come, um, have pre-put in with the motor driver. And um, we ended up using the motor driver just because uh, even though we had a way to communicate with the kind of built-in uh, Jazzy controller, it still had to go through all the software uh, kind of breaks and stuff so it would I mean it would be nice for many other projects because you'd have the ramp up the ramp down and it would be very smooth controls uh, but it wouldn't give us the uh, instantaneous response that we needed so that's why we just went for the uh, motor driver which talked to uh, the motors directly and I will include in the description um, a picture for how all of these get wired together another thing uh, is that we're using I think it's like six and eight gauge wire so it's a pain to work with uh, but it does keep everything nice and cool I, I might be a little off with the number but I, it's around that range uh, also the uh, Sabertooth 60 I think it's dimensional engineering or something they have uh, the specs of the wires you need on their website and that will work best with the motor driver but anyways that's pretty much it on this end of things so now we can move on to the Arduino okay so the accelerometer and gyro we're using is the MPU 6050 and that's just connected to the side of the frame and as close kind of to the axle as possible for the main controller board we have the Arduino Uno and then we also have our handy dandy kill switch which is very important uh, it's kind of bad placing it's a little bit in the way but it's good enough uh, for me to get to it and then we also have our three tuning knobs and then we have this uh, big mess of cables and there's actually a bunch of kind of button circuits in there for the different buttons we're using uh, like for the directions and stuff speaking of them here's the two cables coming from the post and then we also have our two inputs from the tachometers uh, which are two of these four cables right here two of them are also the uh, output to the motor driver we also have this big rail right here for our 5 volts and ground just because in this project we didn't want anything to kind of shake loose or go wrong in that sense so we had as many soldered connections as possible we also have our two directional push buttons for left and right and they go uh, in through from the inside down the tube and come out here we also have um, like I think 20 pounds worth of kind of um, lifting weights up at the front of the jazzy just to uh, balance everything out because all the batteries are kind of 
in the back of the jazzy so uh, we needed that weight because you want to make sure it's kind of balanced before um, you put in the software input okay so here is the tachometer for the robot um, so as you can see it just hooks on to the back of the motor and um, so here's just a little 3D printed stand to hold the tachometer on and then here's a little 3D printed paddle we just painted it black um, and so that goes through the uh, photo interrupter and um, yeah that's pretty much it to the tachometer it just then goes out through a little uh, bushing through the um, kind of casing that goes around the back of the motor um, but yeah we did have to take off the electric brakes uh, to get access to this, but we just want to take them off anyways because it makes uh, dealing with the motors a lot simpler uh, than if they were on. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the tachometer. One really helpful thing you might want to make is a little kickstand. Uh, we just made ours to fit in the uh, rear wheel swivel bearings and it's just a little piece of PVC pipe and it works really well as a kickstand and it uh, helps a lot just to keep everything upright while you're working on it. On a side note, if your wheels aren't turning fast enough for the robot to balance and you have all of your settings maxed out and stuff, you can actually put bigger wheels on and that will uh, increase the speed that the motor or that the robot moves at which could be enough to allow it to balance and it turns out actually that like uh, quantum um, I don't exactly remember the model but I'll put it down in the description uh, there's a quantum uh, mobility scooter which actually has a wheel hub and wheels which are bigger but they still fit on the jazzy uh, motor uh, shaft so uh, they would work perfectly uh, for that scenario. If not, you could always just find something out for yourself, but we've uh, found out that that um, does work really well. Okay, so here is the schematic for the Segway. So the MPU6050 is connected to analog pins 4 and 5, the uh, right push button is connected to pin 6, and the left push button is connected to digital pin 5. The kill switch, which I might add is very, very important, is connected to pin 11, and then our three tuning potentiometers are connected to analog pins 0, 1, and 2. Down here we have our two tachometer inputs, and so the left tachometer is connected to pin um, 8, and the right tachometer is connected to pin 7. And finally, we have our two motor driver outputs. And so the left output is connected to pin 9, and the right output is connected to pin 10. Since the motor driver is also supplying power to the Arduino, for one of the connectors, you'll need to connect also the 5 volts and the ground to the Arduino, just so it will power everything. But yeah, that should wrap up everything for the schematics, so now we can move on to the code. Okay, so here is the code for the Segway. So, um, here is kind of the main program, and this doesn't really have much in it, just because it calls a function in one of the libraries, and then that basically handles the rest. So anyways, it just, um, in the setup, uh, calls that uh, library function, and then just loops, and the library takes it from there. And that library is the uh, balancecard.h. Um, but as you can see, there's quite a few other libraries that are with it, and that's because uh, we actually took this program from the Elegoo uh, Tumblr bot, and we just stripped it down to kind of what we needed, and then changed a few of the balancing things and uh, outputs to work the way we wanted them, and then that basically gave us the uh, end result of a nice balancing robot without having to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so anyway, we can just go whoops, straight, oh, sorry, <laughs> we can just go straight to that uh, initialize function, so that just basically sets the different inputs, outputs. We also have uh, the onboard LED going just because uh, we wanted a way to see whether or not the kill switch was working properly or not uh, in the early testing parts. Uh, we have our PID inputs and all that, we attach the servo outputs, and those are uh, the outputs which go to the motor driver. And then we make sure the car's not moving, and then we 
uh, start communication with the MPU6050. We then attach interrupts for the, the tachometers, and then we have our uh, timer set to just basically loop the balance card function, which is kind of the meat of the program. Uh, so anyways, uh, here are the kind of the variables and all uh, that fun stuff of the program. So we have, of course, the Kalman filter, MPU6050, uh, all that's getting set up. And then as you can see here, we actually have more tuning variables than uh, potentiometers. And so what we ended up doing was we would just uh, tune the variable three at a time. In this case, it was balance, or KP balance, KD balance, and then uh, KD speed. And so we would just tune them uh, three at a time. And then once we got to a point where we liked it, we would just read the value coming from the potentiometer and then just set it uh, in the software and then moved on to the next three. And so that's uh, why they're zero right now, just because we're reading from the potentiometers. Uh, so we didn't need to set those values. But if you wanted to get rid of the potentiometers, you could always just set the values, and then you don't need the potentiometers anymore. Anyways, then we have our calibration value, or uh, angle zero. And um, the way you'll want to do that is you uh, set the balancing robot, or you set the segue up um, to where in its balancing position. And then you'll want to just print out the Kalman filter dot angle variable and then just put uh, whatever you get right in here. After that, we just have a kind of a lot of balancing variables, encoder variables, all that fun stuff. And then um, we go down here to the uh, output uh, variables, and they're actually servo because the uh, the uh, motor driver will take PWM signals, and so the servo uh, library is kind of the easiest way to do that. And so um, we can just talk to the motor driver with that. Uh, you'll want to make sure, though, that the correct dip switches are set for PWM, because it can also read uh, analog, and it also has serial communication options. So uh, you'll just want to make sure that the right dip switches are set for that. But then after that, we have our different potentiometer inputs, we have our button inputs, and then we also have um, a map to function, uh, just because the kind of default map function uh, doesn't do decimals, or at least in my case it wouldn't. So I just changed it from all integers to uh, double, so that we could get some vari or some decimals um, in the uh, tuning variables. After that, we have some different car commands for the forward, back, all that stuff. The forward and back actually aren't. Uh, used, they, but they were just there, so I just didn't think about taking them out. And then we have uh, the main program, or the main function, which is used in the program. So, uh, first of all, we check whether or not, or whether the left or right button was pressed, and so we change the uh, turn speed variable accordingly. Uh, you can play around with this value if you want to be slower or faster, and that's up to you. And then if neither are pressed, we just set to zero. Uh, so it doesn't turn. Now over here we have our analog inputs and it's, as you can see they're uh, set to their corresponding uh, variables. And you might have to change the maximum uh, according to which variable you're changing. So like for the, the KP for balance uh, was quite a lot higher so we already kind of were expecting that so we set it up to be like from 0 to 50. So you'll just have to Kind of experiment with that for yourself and find uh, values that work. But since these didn't seem to need to go as high, we just put them with zero and five, and that seems to work great for us. After that, we have kind of encoder count calculations and all that. And you might notice that it says encoder and not tachometer, and that's actually because the uh, Tumblr bot does use an encoder on the wheels but it only uses one phase of the encoder, so it's basically uh, the same thing as using a tachometer, so that's why the tachometer uh, works just fine in this case. And then after that, we uh, get our the MPU data, and then we calculate the angle out of that, and then we have uh, one of the outputs, the balance control output, and then we have a bunch of uh, <laughs> calculations 
for the speed control output, and that has to do with the uh, tachometers and uh, stuff like that. And then we put those two uh, variables together, or actually three variables, because then we also have the turning stuff. And then we get our PWM for the left and right um, motors. And in this case, we actually had to um, reverse them because uh, the motors were put on backwards. So we just multiplied it by negative one. You might have to get rid of that, uh, depending how your motors are wired. But after that, we made sure to constrain the variables. Uh, since the servo output goes from a value of 1,000 to 2,000, we just constrain them to negative 500 and 500, and then we add 1,500. So basically, if the value is negative 500, it'll be 1,000, and then if it's 500, it'll be 2,000 in the end. After that, we make sure that the kill switch isn't uh, active, but if it is active, uh, we want to make sure the car stops, the PWM is set back to center, so nothing moves, and the robot is safe. Let's see, this little part right here is a redundant thing. Um, you can get rid of it if you want. I just left it there, just because. And then after that, this is if not, or if the kill switch isn't pressed, um, then it'll just send the information to the motor driver, and then the motor driver will um, take care of uh, moving the motors accordingly. After that, we just have basically the two uh, kind of interrupt for uh, when the when the tachometer has a change, either when the paddle disappears or the paddle arrives. And that pretty much uh, wraps up the program. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up the video. I hope it was helpful, informative, or at least enjoyable. And if it was, please leave a like. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. And as always, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!